one of the fun things about Nimble is that they actually launched their company. The first preview of their company was at Tech Field Day, number three, I believe, in Seattle. Thank you very much for that. So uh, I've been, uh, as the Emperor says in Star Wars, I've been watching your progress for a long time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'll start by pronouncing my name. I think uh, Steve bypassed that since it was complex. I'm Suresh Vasudevan, CEO of Nimble Storage. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. Um, Nimble was launched, uh, Nimble was founded in early 2008 and got to market about 18 months ago. Over the last um, 18 months, we've seen very rapid growth. Um, our organization has more than quadrupled. We've now um, had established a global presence over the last um, um, year in particular, and most significantly, we now have uh, a little under 400 customers, a little over 700 deployments, so we've seen a fairly rapid adoption of what we've brought to bear in the marketplace. What I want to uh, focus on over the next 10-15 uh, minutes is really touch on what is the founding vision for us as a company, and what is the value proposition we bring to bear. To do that, I'm going to take a brief look at how um, I see storage architectures as having evolved over the last two decades, and you're all familiar with this. Very quickly, I think the 90s was really the birth of network storage. EMC launched the Symmetrix product line in 1990, went from being a $100 million company to a nearly $10 billion company in just 10 years. Right By 2000, the monolithic frame arrays of the Symmetrix sort became the norm for how to win in network storage, and that was the dominant architecture of the 90s. The last decade saw a displacement of monolithic frame arrays with modular storage systems, um, standalone modular storage systems and clustered uh, modular storage systems, leveraging commodity Intel hardware, commodity um, networking, and using intelligent software. Monolithic arrays today account for less than 20% of the network storage market. Modular arrays account for nearly 70% or so of the network storage market. And so there was a fairly big shift over the last decade in the way that network storage was deployed. As you think about the challenges that modular storage systems face today, um, there are a couple that are particularly prominent, and we've all gone to great lengths to explain how we are different from each other, and yet we all talk about the fact that IO performance and sort of performance needs are a big challenge for our industry. Driven by server virtualization, driven by trends like web scale computing, which are growing over time, there are two particularly severe problems that modular storage systems are not really good at addressing. On the one hand, they're not good at addressing random I.O. needs of applications in virtual environments. They've been, up, they've been really doing a good job at addressing capacity, but not so much performance. They're not particularly suited. The, uh, the old architecture for how you protect data, agent and lots of data movement every night and every weekend, is coming under severe strain as well. So as you think about sort of what it takes to address these challenges, we are all here because we believe that there is a big shift in how storage is going to evolve. And we all, sort of the days called SSD, uh, is around SSDs, and so we all believe that flash optimized storage will fundamentally reshape the manner in which storage systems will evolve over the next decade. And I would go so far as to say that as, as we understand the benefits of flash optimized storage systems, it's, it's very, very hard for incumbents without rethinking their entire product line to survive this transition. And over the next decade, we are likely to see an evolution away from the $20 billion to $30 billion network storage market is likely to see an evo evolution to a new architecture over the next decade. And that's really one of the core beliefs that we were founded with, which is flash optimized storage systems will reshape the network storage industry. The interesting question is, how do you deploy Flash, and how do you make sure sort of you win as we transition from one architecture to another architecture? And, and one of the first and early uh, um, ways to leverage Flash, one that certainly everybody has adopted, is where Flash logically um, sort of um, can easily address the problem, and that is in tackling really high-performance application needs. All, all Flash arrays, server-based Flash, end up being really doing a good job of addressing the needs of high performance applications in large enterprises, in web scale environments, and so on. And that's really where we've already seen substantial traction for a lot of the industry players in terms of revenues, in terms of customers. Now, as you think about will this approach translate to take on the bulk of the enterprise mid-range storage market, I go back and sort of think about what are the criteria for winning in the main mainstream enterprise application storage market. And 
if you look back at the evolution over the last two decades of sort of how architectures have evolved, in the end, we can get enamored by technology, but the criteria for why a customer might choose a product in storage seems to devolve down to a few very common factors. At the end of the day, storage is infrastructure that exists in serving the needs of an application, and the common attributes that customers seem to care about are who's best at delivering the lowest cost of capacity, who's best at delivering the lowest cost of performance, can you make sure that I don't have any application interruptions irrespective of problems in the storage layer, and who simplifies operational constraints that I face in managing my day-to-day -day IT operations? And it seems that winning storage architectures do a good job of addressing these core economic drivers. And so what I want to touch on really is how do we think we can address these core economic drivers, and why is our architecture well suited to addressing these economic drivers of customer decision making? And that's where I would start by saying, we started off by saying Nimble was founded on the premise that flash optimized storage will transform the network storage market. A second belief system we bring to bear is that flash standalone is not the perfect answer to addressing the needs of mainstream enterprise applications. There are things that flash is really good at. On random read, flash is superb relative to disk. On random writes, it's good in terms of delivering performance, but it comes at a cost. You have endurance challenges to overcome. With, with, when it comes to sequential I.O., traditional low-cost disk drives still do a better job at delivering sequential I.O. on a per-dollar basis. And on capacity, Flash today still has a significant performance penalty relative to disk drives, and it's not clear that it can completely eliminate that performance penalty, uh, that cost penalty over time. Perhaps the more controversial topic is that even though um, sort of we think we understand the endurance properties of Flash and how to overcome that, We've now had multiple decades of learning how to overcome the vagaries of disk drives, and we'll go through a similar learning curve with Flash. This is not to suggest that there are problems with Flash or problems with disk drives. It is to merely suggest that when you construct a storage system and serve the needs of an application, there are multiple parameters that you're optimizing to, and an intelligent system will leverage the complementary strengths of both. Even more importantly, an intelligent system will say, over time, as the properties of these media types change over time, we should be very flexible in being able to use more or less flash, depending on what the application needs, more or less drives, depending on what the application needs, and more importantly, depending on how the media evolves over time. Flash might get more costly, might get uh, more, uh, or less costly over time at a faster pace or a slower pace, and we should, we should be able to adapt over time. And that's really the second founding philosophy that we brought to bear, which is an intelligent hybrid system that is flexible and can evolve over time is the way to address mainstream enterprise storage requirements. So what is, I'm going to give you a very brief uh, snapshot into what our architecture looks like and how we leverage the complementary nature of both media types. Um, and sort of diving a, a, a couple of steps deeper, as IO enters, so this is the, the, the file system we brought to bear in designing our storage system. Again, I, I do agree with almost everybody that said, you have to rethink the entire storage system design from the ground up to leverage what Flash is good at and in particular to leverage the complementary aspects of flash and disk. And so we came up with a design that we think leverages the properties of both very, very effectively. And the file system we deploy within our product line is, uh, is what we term cache accelerated sequential layout. So let me just bring out a few aspects or attributes of, of what our file system does in handling um, normal I.O. All data that comes into our system is acknowledged in non-volatile RAM and then compressed in memory. And so we do inline compression and it's stored in memory. When an application thinks it's issued hundreds to thousands of random IOs, we gang together all of those random IOs. So the application thinks it's issued thousands of random IOs. We convert all of that, all of those random IOs into one large sequential IO as far as our disk subsystem is concerned. And therein lies one key aspect of how we deliver write performance. Unlike most storage systems, we're not leveraging flash as a tier or as a write cache our intellectual properties in being able to guarantee serialization of incoming random I.O. because disk drives are really good at handling sequential I.O. So the application thinks it's issued thousands of random I.O.s, our disk subsystem thinks it's received a few sequential I.O.s, and that's really where our write performance comes from. Our use of flash SSDs um, is to aid this process of serialization in the write path. On the read path, we do something very similar to how many other companies accelerate reads, which is ensure that a large proportion of our reads are coming out of flash, uh, well over 90% of our reads are coming out of flash, and we make sure that we don't incur the penalty of moving I.O. from our disk subsystem 
into our flash by caching at, at the time that you write data in the first place. So write performance through serialization, read performance through using flash SSDs as a caching layer. What we also do from a data protection perspective is have the ability within our system to store thousands of compressed, performance optimized backup images, if you will, of any particular volume or file system. And that provides for not having to have any data movement as you're doing backups every hour, every 15 minutes, every day, and so on. So in, in a nutshell, you basically have the same system serving primary application data and also storing hundreds of backups that do not go through a data movement process, do not go through an agent invoking a data movement in the first place. Lastly, um, to address concerns around vulnerability because your primary and backup images are on the same system, we also have implemented WAN-optimized replication that allows you to keep a copy of hundreds to thousands of backups on a remote DR system that are in the native application format, which acts both as a DR and as an insurance policy in the rare instance where the entire system goes down and you lose both primary data as well as backup data. So as I step back, um, let me touch on a few core aspects of how we've leveraged both flash and hard disk drives to essentially what I think, uh, go back and address what I think are the core attributes of a, how a customer makes decisions. Lower the cost of the system from a capacity standpoint, lower the cost from a performance standpoint, ensure that my data is protected and simplify operations. And so as I think about sort of where flash and disk are um, strong and complementary and, and sort of how we've leveraged that approach, um, random reads, flash is great. What we've done to further leverage flash beyond its normal properties is the fact that we've lowered the amount of flash needed for a given amount of performance acceleration by storing data in a compressed manner on flash, by using flash as a cache and avoiding the need for RAID overhead, and by ensuring that we can get long life despite using MLC, the amount of flash SSDs we need to achieve a given amount of read acceleration tends to be about one-fifth to one-tenth of what most other tiered systems need. So that's our use of flash as a read cache. On the right path, where you might normally see a 15x penalty on random writes per dollar, by serializing our writes into our disk subsystem, we've essentially eliminated that, perform that uh, dollar penalty on write IOPS. Right? Our disks are able to do where a traditional SAS drive is able to do 150 IOPS, and a SATA drive is able to do 75 IOPS. We get thousands of write IOPS, 4K random write IOPS, out of our uh, disk subsystem. And so that's really where we've leveraged both high write performance and low cost. On sequential I.O., disk is better on a per dollar basis than flash. We use um, um, disks for our sequential I.O. Capacity, not only are we leveraging the fact that today disks are more cost effective, we also, by employing compression, are further sort of taking advantage of the lower cost of disk, if you will, and that's sort of leveraging the complementary strength of, of, of disk subsystems from a cost per gigabyte perspective. And lastly, uh, on reliability, um, it's, it's a, it's a, two, it's a two-track approach. We will leverage all the gains in flash reliability and endurance that happen over time, but much more significantly by using flash SSDs as a read cache, we are less vulnerable to having to deal with the endurance concerns that flash imposes. One of the strengths of this architecture is I mentioned that we use flash SSDs as a read cache. The reality is when we get into environments where you want your entire working set delivered out of cache, by just increasing the amount of flash in a storage system to close to 40, 50 percent, you're guaranteeing that almost the entire, of the total system capacity, you're guaranteeing that your entire working set can be served out of flash. So one of the strengths of the hybrid approach is that if necessary, you can have your entire working set for an application reside in flash and still deliver the high performance while you're using the disk subsystem for very high write performance. This is our approach to leveraging the complementary strengths of both flash and, and um, hard disk drives. And I'll go back and describe sort of what we think our overall goal is as a company and what our belief system is. We are not um, sort of wedded to a technology approach as much. We love Flash for the disruptive potential it brings to bear. We love the fact that we can challenge, I think, the $30 billion incumbent market space for uh, network storage systems. But our ultimate goal and metric for success is, is founded on the principle that every enterprise application 
is requires a blend of attributes, some amount of capacity, some amount of performance, data protection, simplicity, and so on. And really, the winning solution is not one that optimizes to any one of these attributes, but one that really delivers all of them simultaneously. And so that's, that's really our metric for success. Our mission is, can we be the most efficient at delivering the blended set of attributes that our customers care about? So with that, I think I've pretty much ended my time frame here. So thank you very much.